Fox Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us. I promise maybe after next week we'll stop talking about this, but we're three <laughs> days out till the election. A lot of races in Arizona are very tight, key races. So we thought we'd bring on two of the brightest political minds in the state for a final look at the races before election Tuesday. Stan Barnes, president of Copper State Communications, served in the Arizona legislature, by the way. Chuck Coughlin, um, a, a veteran of political wars in this state and president of High Ground. Good to see you both. Good to be here. Great to be here, John. Okay, let's get right to the governor's race. Uh, we've got new polling out from our polling group, and that's uh, Insider Advantage. Matt Towery, who runs that outfit, I interviewed him last week, and he, he, we had Kerry Lake up at that point by 11 points. He told me, he said, look, this could be an outlier. You've got 4% four, you've got 4 margin of error on both sides, on both candidates. Right. He goes, this, this doesn't, he goes, this is our number. He goes, but I think it could be an outlier. He was very upfront about it. This newest poll's got it a lot tighter. Stan, first to you, what do yeah. you think? I would much rather be Carrie Lake than Katie Hobbs today, uh, with those numbers or without those numbers. The well, inter and it's been a trend now for it, a while. That, that's a, you're still in my line. Um, okay, sorry. It's, it's been a trend. <laughs> it's been a trend. And the energy feels like it's with her. But she also has the, uh, the double-digit lead with some really key uh, components, like men. She's lead Men are double-digit for Carrie. And if you're over wow. 55... You're for carry. And so th those categories are people that turn out and vote. And of course, the whole thing is going to come down to who actually votes. And I, that's why I'd rather be carry than Katie, because okay. her constituencies are going to vote. Chuck, is this a vote in an election year that seems to be kind of leaning Republican? Just the, the, the winds are kind of at the Republicans' sure. back. Is this a vote for a Republican, or is this a really hard vote for Carrie Lake? No, I mean, in a normal Republican year, this would be a crushing you, you'd like Ducey uh, in 18, it was a crushing win. It's a, it's a sign of the narrowness of Lake's appeal. He was that proven, though. He was proven. People sure. knew exactly what they sure. were getting. But he, he wasn't a full-on MAGA candidate and denying the 20 election. So, I mean, he's not, doesn't carry, he doesn't carry that negative burden with him as Lake does in this race. You got her at about, what, three. We got her this morning at one and a half. Um, and the aggregate of the polls has her ahead, yeah, slightly? Yeah, slightly. This but, is real clear it, politics. It really comes down, it, it's all within the margin of error, and our data shows it's going to come down to unaffiliated voters, which way they break in the race. They're currently breaking for Kelly in the Senate race. They're breaking a little bit for Hobbs, but she needs to substantially increase that in order to be competitive. He's right on the men's side. I would say on the opposite, women are double digits for Hobbs on the other side of the Is uh, that equation. abortion, Stan, or what is that? I, I, I don't know. I think it's a lot about style as much as anything. And um, so it's, it's going to be it's going to be fun to watch play out. I remember during the primary, I said on this program that the Republican Party was not just choosing its nominee. It was deciding who it is. And, and we decided that with Carrie Lake. The Republican Party is the America First Party. So how big is that? Is that the majority of Arizona? That's what we're figuring out on November 8th. You give me that answer, I'll tell you who's going to win. If the America First thing as a phenomenon, it, represented by the Republican yeah. Party, is that big, then Kerry's going to be in the big chair. Okay, this is right in your wheelhouse because you worked <laughs> for him. John McCain. Sure. Are we seeing a shifting of the guard here, that it is becoming a Trump mega Republican Party, not a McCain uh, undoubtedly. And, and remember, you know, John McCain was as far right as you could go when he first was elected. Yeah. He was way right. Yeah. With Reagan every step of the way. He moderated when he got to the U.S. Senate. But he, I mean. He voted against Obamacare. He, and he voted against <laughs> Obamacare because there wasn't an option. It was, it was this or nothing. It was, it was an empty-headed vote, which is what Trump was asking him to do. Vote, for, vote against this, but we don't have an alternative. So he voted no. I mean, and that, that got the opprobrium of the entire you know, MAGA movement going at that time. And it's still a burden on him are, today. Are we seeing a shift in the party? Oh, it's done. I mean, the Republican Party is never going to be again what it was. Um, it has become this cult of personality around Donald Trump and the MAGA movement, and um, the denial, the election denialism, and anybody that's not that is a rhino. 
I mean, we've seen that in the censure of numerous Republican candidates who have stepped out and said, I'm not there. I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to deny the 20 election. I'm not going to run on a lie. Can you not say that you have questions about an election anymore without being called a denier or this or that? I mean, it, it's the American way to question, and Democrats have done it. We had several things in Congress when Bush was elected, when... Uh, I mean, when, when Trump was elected. I, I could do it for you. And that's Kerry's point. The first time I ever heard someone say the president's illegitimate and he stole the election was when Hillary Clinton said it in 2016. And Stacey Abrams in, in Georgia, who's up again for governor, has never conceded that she lost the race that's right. last time. So, so, so Democrats have done it. Republicans, when they have done it, as it turns out, have millions of people standing behind them. Well, Al Gore I did, agree. But Al Gore didn't do it. And he was, he was vice president, lined up to be president. He had did, a position though. in the White House. <laughs> and, and we had a sitting president of the United States deny the reality of an election. I mean, that, and, and then coordinate what is unarguably uh, a treasonous move to overthrow the government and overthrow uh, uh, the election how, process. How much do you suppose that hangs over all of this? The January 6th images. Yeah, I think it, it hangs over it terribly. Uh, and, and you either come at it from that was bad, but, but, or you come at it from a Chuck's angle, which is it was so bad that everyone who anywhere near it and disqualified. It is disqualified. And okay. that split is what's got Arizona in the balance. Where that's right. got, and, and that's, that's right. where the, the whole question is, do voters really still right. care about it two years That later. was the point I was about to make, is that I think voters in general are dismissive of it, and it's in yeah. the rearview mirror. Let's take a look that's at That's going to be the issue. Yeah, yeah, let's take a look at the Senate race. Um, Mark Kelly seems to be kind of where Kerry Lake is in that governor's race. We've got it right now at a dead wow. heat. Mark Victor still, his name will appear on the ballot. We're yeah. going to hear from him shortly because he had some interesting things to say this week. Uh, but Kelly's still kind of on that. He's, he's been ahead most of the way. Masters is within striking distance, but do you think in the end it's, it's Mark Kelly? Yeah, we had Kelly up by two and a half today. And okay. yeah, that's been a consistent thing. Um, so it's within the margin of error what you're seeing here. And I've never seen a poll with Mark's behind. So if you look at the conglomeration of things, and he's got about a four-point lead in Maricopa County right now. If, if somebody's never been behind, do they almost always win? And it's a good sign for yeah. sure. But, but Mark Kelly was up by big numbers yep. two years ago and won by little, small numbers. And yep. so the fear in the Kelly campaign yep. is he's over-polling. And, and, the, the, and the Blake Masters is under polling. And then when the reality hits on November 8th, it's going to be a whole new story. If Mark Kelly loses, we can once and for all say money does not buy an election. Because <laughs> well, he's raised $75 million. Didn't dollars. Didn't with Karen Taylor Robeson well, either. Right. And, well, amen. I mean, yeah. there's two exclamation points there. Um, Mark Kelly is, is raising and spending presidential sums of money in this U.S. Senate race. race. I, think we were all, I think we're all a bit... Um, overconfident um, of Kelly's success in this cycle, not recognizing, let's remember the cycle we're in. We're in a midterm cycle, as mm -hmm. we pointed out. There's a plus eight Republican turnout advantage in this cycle versus in the presidential cycle. We cast it as a, I think it ended up being a plus two. So you have a much better chance in this cycle of a Republican winning because of the overperformance of Republicans versus Democrats. They're more energized. That's why I say it comes down to I, unaffiliated. I want to play the Mark Victor sound because, and I got a lot of heat for it, but I asked him flat out, and you'll see it, about whether anybody paid him off to get out of the race. Yeah. To me, that's the million dollar question, right. literally, right. because people were talking about it saying, what would compel a guy to leave this late in the race? So take a look. This is Mark Victor, libertarian, dropping out of the Senate race this week, and this is a guy garnering anywhere from 2 to 6% of the vote, if you believe the polls. Here's Mark Victor. So you had an unscripted, as I understand it, unscripted and recorded conversation with Blake Masters hashing this all out. That's true. That was, that was an absolute inflexible condition of mine if they wanted to have a conversation. Give me uh, on the plus side where Blake Masters aligned with that, where you said, OK, I can support him. And then tell me what was the biggest hurdle where you disagreed with him. Yeah, fair questions. People should watch the interview. It's only about 20 minutes long. They can make their own decisions. But virtually everything in the economic realm, sound money, 
uh, lower taxes, uh, less spending, cutting the debt, all of that stuff. We, I think we were virtually 100% aligned on that. We need to get our financial house in order. On the civil liberties uh, side of things, I actually was pretty encouraged. I, he gave me good answers on uh, many issues, including immigration. I even talked to him about euthanasia. My most disappointing answer, where there was the most daylight between us, was the drug war. But he went pretty far to say that marijuana should be treated like alcohol, and also that the federal government should be mostly out of the federal drug war. So there's a little bit of daylight between about, us on that. What, I about the, the uh, that. what about the 2020 election stuff? We didn't talk about that at all. I mean, it was a very short interview. I would have liked to have drilled down much more on every issue, but we didn't get into that. During the debate, uh, he did ultimately say that he thought uh, the election, that Joe Biden was lawfully elected as president, so I'll accept him at his word on that. What, with one week to go, I mean, people are going to ask, why not do it earlier, that, that your name still appears on the ballot? We went through this with Matt Salmon in the primary, the Republican primary, where he got out later than his, you know, his name ended up on the ballot. And some say that it may have cost uh, Karen Taylor Robeson a lot of votes. But at any rate, did, did you want to do it earlier? Were you just waiting for the two camps to reach out to you? Yes, I would have loved to have done it sooner. That's why I put the invitation out there sooner. But having a public discussion, 100% transparent, no backroom deals, that was a non-negotiable thing for me. And so this way, everybody can see the conversation. In fact, uh, Blake Masters says at the very beginning, these are the first words we exchanged since the debate. I didn't want to do anything behind closed doors. I wanted it to be 100% transparent. I wish they had reached out sooner. We would have had a discussion earlier, but they waited until now. You'll have to ask them why they waited so long. Mark, I have to ask you, it's the million dollar question. No pun intended. You know the chatter out there. There are people who assume Peter Thiel may have lined your pocket to get you to drop out. Did you accept or get any money from the Masters folks to drop out? Not only did I not get any money, I didn't ask for any concessions of any kind whatsoever, nor did I get any concessions of any kind whatsoever. The only thing I wanted was a candidate who came on and did a public conversation with me and uh, laid out a whole bunch of positions on a whole bunch of issues to make me feel like that person was going to try to move our state and our country in a more pro-freedom direction. So to be super clear, didn't receive one dime, nor would I have accepted one dime. What I'm in this for is freedom, peace, and civility. Do you hurt the libertarian cause or the push that some people would like to see for a third party by pulling out? I don't worry about those things. I am a lone wolf. I speak for myself. I'm committed to advancing the cause of freedom, peace, and civility. No matter who likes it or who doesn't like it, I'm not loyal to any particular party. I'm loyal to those principles and those values, and uh, I'm not likely to stray from them for any reason whatsoever. Okay, uh, this, these are the numbers right now. These are our numbers. I know the other numbers have it a little different, but Mark Kelly right now in a dead heat with Blake Masters, according to our polling by Insider Advantage. Just to answer me, each of you. Um, we'll start with Chuck this time. <laughs> Mark Victor dropping out. Is it a big deal to Blake Masters? Could it push him over the finish line? It certainly helps. It certainly helps um, getting that participation out. The thing everybody, as you pointed out in the interview, his name's still on the ballot. So he's still going to draw down two to three percent of the vote, which which be critical in a two, three, four, five point race. Okay, Stan. Yeah, the election between Masters and Kelly might be less than five digits of spread. Right, there might be less than ten thousand votes between them. Uh, you yeah. tell me how many votes it's worth. I think it's worth every single vote. In other words, yeah, I think it actually might make the difference, crazy enough. Matt Towery, who does our polling with Insider Advantage, he told me if I were Blake Masters right now, I would be running ads against Mark Victor. This was a week ago because he said Mark Victor is taking votes away yes. from Blake Masters. Yes. He said I'd be going after him. Yes. <laughs> right. And the Kelly, the, the Kelly campaign wanted him to stay fully engaged, right? But, because the, you know, the, 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 the funny yeah. thing about that is, though, 
That's exactly what Mark Victor wants. He wanted your attention. He wanted, that's why he reached well, out. I appreciate him coming he on. Want, he knows he's not going to win. Yeah, so he wants the attention. And so if I would say it's a bad move, Masters should have reached out earlier and tried to get him out of the race and earlier and keep his name off the ballot. Yeah, that was the tactical mistake. Historically, the libertarian, sometimes it's Mark Victor. And other takes away from they, they Not only they take away from Republicans, but they, they want to, uh, they're playing a longer game. And, and to talk to them is futile because they want to be on the ballot all the way to the yeah. end and make a point. In this case, he bowed to reality. You don't see a lot by the libertarian candidate. Yeah, the reality is they're not gonna win and they might put Joe Biden in charge of the U.S. Senate for another two there years. You go. Okay, when we come back, we're gonna talk about, we've got three congressional races that could flip. Right now, Democrats have a 5-4 edge in Arizona. That could turn into a 6-3 Republican advantage if everything went the our way on election night. Also, Secretary of State and Attorney General. Those are big races. We're going to talk about it with Stan Barnes and Chuck Coughlin when we come back on Newsmaker Saturday. Okay, back on Newsmaker Saturday, we're, we're kind of going over the races with uh, Chuck Coughlin, founder and president of High Ground Copper State Communications, Stan Barnes. Let's look at the AG race. This is interesting. Abe yeah. Hamaday, not a lot of experience. He, he was maybe a four-year prosecutor in Maricopa None. County. <laughs> yeah. Chris Mays, who's made a lot of her... Um, judicial experience at the Corporation Commission, but yeah. even people on the commission say that's not really a big thing with us. You're not a lawyer. You're not really a, a prosecutor. Who, Stan, who's got the edge here? I will say this. I'd rather, in, in a race where we don't know, I'd rather be the Republican candidate yeah. because the Republican win is, at the back is a real phenomenon. And I, but to, to your earlier point, the, the, there's a great deal of money being spent by Democrats because they believe they can overcome. And most of the television advertisement on, on your program and others is negative against Republicans, negative against Hamaday, negative against Fincham, certainly negative against Kerry. But yet the races are all very, very close. So there's something there where voters either are numb or just, not, just don't want to get it. To the election denialism stuff. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that, that's, that, that, that's one of these issues that gets weighed in the balance of things, you know, between immigration, inflation, uh, election denialism, and, and reproductive rights. You know, where is a voter's mind at? And how do they, and everybody filters those different Hasn't ways. Hasn't the polling told us it is economy? Yeah, and, no, it is. But and, in Arizona, and inflation. And in Arizona, we've had a lot of wind at our, uh, a lot of issues about, we've got a whole MAGA ticket. I mean, you've got a whole election denial ticket. And we've had this issue of uh, uh, reproductive rights on the front page of the newspaper that's still in front of the Supreme Court right now. Yeah, I think the average voter takes a lot <laughs> less seriously the election denier label. I, it, um, among insiders and echo chambers and consultants, it's a very big deal. And Democrats I don't have a lot to talk about, so they love talking about that because they think it sticks. But I think the average guy on his couch has got his own opinion, and it's just a smaller issue compared to the bigger I, issues. I yeah. also sense that that's two years ago now. Yeah, I, I agree. Is this top of mind for just ordinary folks going to work in when, the morning? Well, Barack Obama was here this week to say that democracy's hanging by a thread if you elect these Republicans in Arizona, and well, that's a the, national the, story. The, the notion is, and it's a correct notion, is we can't solve all of our problems unless you trust elections. Unless you have the willingness People to trust, trust the election. elections, though. They, well, the, no, you got Carrie Lake and the old. Well, no, so they're got, not going to the certify polling, The polling shows no, but that it, most that's people the point. do actually but trust that's the elections. Point. You have a leadership that says, "I'm not going to obey that. I'm going to do what I want." I think it's 79 percent. Right. They say, I'm, "I do I'm trust the you. elections." But that that becomes the issue okay. is is you don't trust it. So the, our our thing on on this race, on the attorney general's race, it's going to be a squeaker. It's going to come down to the wire. Uh, we had it like at 1.5 for Hamada. Um, back to but he's Stan's leading point. and he's been leading. He has. So here we and go. I think to it's that. back to that. Okay, point. let's go to Secretary of State. This is a big, big. I mean, they oversee all the election stuff that goes on in the state. Adrian Fontes, the Democrat. Mark Fincham, the Republican. Mark Fincham has really been painted, you know, as an election denier. That's been the tab on him. It's interesting. The latest things I've seen with the Republican top tier candidates, it's been Kerry, Blake Masters, and Abe Hamaday. And sometimes missing is Mark Fincham. Are they distancing themselves from Mark Fincham? No, are, who's they? I'm talking about Take Terry it. Lake, no, I, Lake I don't, Masters. I don't think they are. No, I don't think they're distancing. And I don't think voters take it as seriously as, as the echo chamber does. 
They, I mean, they, they think in broader, bigger terms, and they don't personalize it. Now, some do. But the Democrats, that's their whole message, is to read that to the voter and say, well, democracy democracy's <laughs> hanging. If you vote for Mark Fincham, the world's going to end. Is, he does run the election. <laughs> yeah, but but there, were, there were so many other things yeah. involved. This is the guy who actually gonna, runs the gonna election. Win it? Who's going to win that race? I, I think I'd rather be the Republican oh, no. wow. than the Democrat. No. I, I would rather be. No, I love my brother, but it's Fontes is going <laughs> to win that. We can disagree here. I know, I do love him, but Fontes is going to win that election. I'll guarantee okay, that. Let's he get guarantees to the, it. I guarantee it. Let's, wow. Let's get to the House. <laughs> that means voters are pretty discerning we about got him what they're doing. We got him up by nearly three okay, points Okay, this right is now. probably the biggest opportunity for a flip for um, Republicans and then the district in southern Arizona. But Tom O'Halloran, pretty popular in his old district, but yeah. the new district is very unfavorable That's to him. It. Is he going to get beat? Stan? You summed it up. Yes, I do believe he will. He will get beat. I agree. Chuck. I agree. That, that district is now a plus. I think it voted for Trump by seven points in the last election. So it's really, it's an uphill slide for What happened there? It's all redistricting yeah, with it is. the census. Yeah, it's redrawn. How did the Republicans get an edge on the redistricting? Oh, well, that's a whole other television program. It's an independent com commission. <laughs> yeah, it is independent. Uh, but sometimes it tilts one way or the other. <laughs> okay. And the Republicans it's, played their hand very well. Very well. And in this case, we, we're going to pick up of the three swing seats. Okay. Two of them for sure. Yeah, I agree. The, okay. the Southern Arizona seat you talked we'll about. We'll get to that. Let's okay. go to four, yeah. which is Greg Stanton, the former Phoenix yes. mayor. Uh, I think he's now going for his... Is this his third term in Congress he's going for? I believe that's it correct. Sounds right. Okay, Kelly Cooper, a newcomer, a veteran. We've had a lot of veterans running. Right. It's Where's very that flag? Is Greg Stan in any difficulty here, Stan? I believe he is. I, I happen to live in this district. Remember, it's redrawn. If it's a wave election, he yes. could be a casualty. Yes. Right? If it's 20 plus seats changing in U.S. Congress, I think he's in the balance. I, I'm not on board with my brother. This is <laughs> this is a stand win. This is why we have you guys. This is a stand win. I mean, I, I think he wants to believe that that's going to happen. But this part of the Maricopa County is purple Maricopa County. We're talking Tempe. We're talking uh, East Mesa. We're talking Ahwatukee. College educated. Uh, and parts of Phoenix. Right. But, I mean, it, it, it's, not, it's not a it, it's a lean blue district. You know, yeah, but lean blue in a midterm when everything is going to hell yep. in the country? Is it going? Yeah, That's well, the way it feels yeah. to the average person. I, I guess what I was thinking, <laughs> what I was picking up on, is it going I'm to hell for the Democrats? I'm still doing pretty well. Is it going to hell for the Democrats in this cycle? I think it is. You believe that? The cycle? The cycle. No, the cycle is definitely against the Democrats in this cycle. I mean, the, the economy... Immigration, the issues we've been talking the border, about. You're yes. swimming upstream. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm watching. I'm watching Greg Stan running a lot of ads. Oh, and Biden. I mean, Biden. And I'm like, wow. I mean, you don't I mean, usually that, get this. That's why Kelly's struggling so much is because he's carrying Biden's bag. That's right. Record inflation, mortgage rates, what they are, gas, milk, you name it. I mean, I, yeah. nothing is going well for Democrats. So okay, I, I, why have any enthusiasm that Stanton is going to overcome that? It's not in our area of dominant influence, no. but Congressional just, District 6, Pima County, most of Tucson, Cochise County, and Kirkpatrick retiring. Juan Siscomani, who's getting a lot of good press. Mm -hmm. People are impressed with this guy. Uh, Kirsten Engel, who I don't know as much about, what, what's going to happen here? Yeah, Kirsten Engel's one of the nicest people ever to serve in the Arizona legislature, but she's going to get beat because the district is a Republican district, and Siscomani is a great candidate. And so that's going to be a net flip. Kirkpatrick's leaving the Democrat. Juan Siscomani is going to be the victor. You add that to Eli Crane defeating O'Halloran, and in my view, Kelly Cooper beating Stanton, and we go from 5-4 to 7-2. 5-4 Democrats. Yes. Two. To 7-2. 6-3. You're going to have to give me something what you're smoking No, I, I, I think 7-2 <laughs> if you do seven the math. Two. Okay. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Siscomone's going to win this race. We got 30. I, I agree with that. He's going to win this race. He's not a full MAGA candidate. He's a business what? Republican in line with One DC. final thing. Are we going to know election night or not on the, on the top tier races? No. 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 We're going to be here into Thursday. Democrats are going to be winning election night at when we go to bed. At they're going to be at 8 o'clock, they're going to be winning. And it's going to be catch up for the next 48 hours. And the question with is can they catch up? In Republican. person voting. Yes. Yes. Great to see you. Yes. Yeah, Sam Barnes. Great Chuck to Hoffman. be here. Thank you, John. We're going to find out how you did afterwards. Oh, man. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. He's buying dinner. He's All buying right. dinner. Okay. All right.